Well, speaking of ratings, we got to talk about Wednesday and uh, Friday Night SmackDown. Yeah, Friday, Friday SmackDown was uh, the highest since June. Um, I think it's two things. Um, I thought the SmackDown show was generally good. I mean, last week's show was freaking atrocious. But the, um, whatever, the the redemption storyline, it's goofy and everything, but it's it's obviously, you know, ever since they started it, numbers have gone up. And then, um, you know, this one was still up. You know, it wasn't, you know, I, I figured it'd be up for a couple shows, and then who knows, because really the angle has been pretty stupid. But it was God, still up. it was so stupid on this show. Yeah. Like, literally, the show opens with him saying... Well, we've added a bunch of security here after what happened last week to make sure that nothing happens here on this show. And it is not five minutes before Redemption is in the building. Yep. It's like five minutes. All that added security. And the lights just went out and they're in the ring. Yeah, yeah. Attacking uh, Biggie and um, Morrison. Um and then they came back out a second time, destroying everyone in the dressing room. This was when all the wrestlers had come out to make sure that, that uh, you know, they didn't get to the ring. during They're the killing yep. people in this dressing room. And meanwhile, the wrestlers are just having this match. And Michael Cole's screaming, someone's got to go back and tell these wrestlers that the redemption's in the locker room. I'm like, you're right there. Just go tell them. Nope. Yeah. Wrestlers just stood around looking stupid. The Redemption storyline is awful. The show as a whole was way better than last week. But the well, Redemption stuff is irredeemable. But it's I, I, I believe that's the key thing. The other key thing is probably the uh, Alexa Bliss, Bray Wyatt, Braun Strowman thing. I think that that was kind of clicking. Um, it's stupid, too. I it's guess also the idea, nonsensical. Yeah, the, I guess the idea is that they've switched personalities and now Braun Strowman is actually Bray Wyatt and Bray Wyatt's now Braun Strowman. Or maybe it's just the fiend. I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to figure out exactly. But this Bray Wyatt, this Braun Strowman has no compassion whatsoever for Alexa Bliss and she can't understand it. And she doesn't believe it, but it's there. Dude, I couldn't Bray believe that after two and a half years, they finally showed a bunch of stuff with Alexa Bliss and Braun Strowman. This is the first time in two and a half years on national television that they've ever told us anything about these two. They yeah. just presumed everybody watched Mixed Match Challenge, which if you recall, nobody, nobody was watching Mixed Match Challenge. No, but they did commercials during SmackDown for Mixed Match Challenge, you know, and those two were, were always in the commercials together. There was, there was always that thing where you sort of would have known but it was never no you you're right sort it, of knew yeah it was sort of it was it was sort of there that there was a connection team little big and she was kind of bossing him around and he he had a crush on her that was all there but you're right it was years ago it hasn't been touched in years now they're bringing it back but look they got to find something and um at least they found something that, that's working i mean before they were trying a million different things and nothing was working uh next week they are going to be back in the. They're going to be in the Amway Center constantly, with the same kind of fans. You know, fans on the on the screen like an NBA game or a baseball game, and a bunch of other things that they're looking at doing. You know, maybe like crowd crowd noise through Zoom or something. There um, seemed to be a lot of crowd sweeting on Friday's show, which. I have no problem with because I thought it made for a better show. This was like the liveliest well, you know, one crowd the they things, had on SmackDown in months. Yeah, well, you know what? Well, the thing is, but they tell them, okay? And here's the thing: this is but the it was thing more than just the crowd. It was like there was extra added crowd. Well, they always, they on always top do. Of the crowd. They, they always do. They always do. They've been doing that constantly. Now they won't be able to do it starting next week because they're starting Friday. Monday show was already taped, but starting Friday, every show's live, so we're not going to have that crowd sweetening. But what they've done. And I bet you they keep this is those boards, you know, this plexiglass. So you got the the fans just pound, or the the wrestlers pounding on that glass like it's, you know, I mean it's it's essentially the PWG gimmick where all the fans pound, would pound on the mat. Well, we they will never let anyone close enough to pound on the mat. But the sound of pounding on the glass is the same thing. And when that that pounding They're performance sound, performance center students, I'm pretty sure they could get people pounding on the mat. They wouldn't. They didn't let them. They don't even let them near the place. They don't even let them near the mat. That's why they got the boards to the, the, the barricades. Because what do you need barricades when you know that the reason you have barricades 
is because you're afraid of a nutty fan hopping, you know, and getting to the well, ring. Well, the Boogs is out there. Yeah. But, I mean, you, you know, literally, there's no need for barricades other than they're just part of the look of the show at this point. I mean, there's no need for barricades in AEW either. You know, it's just like, it's just now, it's just... Barricades are there so you whip somebody in the barricades. They're not even there to actually be barricades because, you know, none of these guys are hitting the ring for real. You know, there's nothing to worry about. So it's it's whatever. But, um, yeah, I think that was like the key. The um, They were... The second hour, top two million viewers. I think um, it's because Joe Park came back. That's not why. I mean, Joe Park was back with AJ Styles. He did some stuff. He was, you know, that was nice nostalgia and everything like that. And he did have great facial expressions. And they did call him Joseph Park. So he, he was there with AJ Styles. And uh, Jeff Hardy started their program, which was supposed to be uh, a couple of weeks ago. They were supposed to do that. And then that was one of the things Vince erased from the show. So he's a little bit late on starting this thing. But there, that match is actually not on SummerSlam right now. It's on television yeah, it's for next Friday. So, and then they did the, the Mandy Rose, Sonya Deville hair matches on. Um, and then the Battle Royal, Asuka won. I was so pissed. I have to say this. This is like the perfect opportunity to give somebody an opportunity. Um, there's only... Oh, like know, Rhea Ripley? Rhea Ripley or Bianca Belair, someone... I'm waiting for Hunter to pay this off for me. He promised this months ago. Yeah. But, I mean, anyone, anyone, you could make someone and get them in a championship match on a pay-per-view. Right now, all you needed, they had nobody. And then they, it's like, this is like the whole WWE mentality that's like so... It's like they go to Asuka, who already has a match. Instead of, like, giving somebody else a spotlight... You have Asuka do two matches on the same night. And I know that there's going to be some storyline based on that and, and, you know, and all that, but it's just need to have two matches on the same night. And it's redundant. Hey, at least we're going to have two good matches. Yeah, but you could have two good matches either way. Asuka and Sasha Banks would be a good match. There are plenty of women who could have a good match with Bailey. Maybe not as good as Asuka. I mean, you know, realistically, maybe Io Shirai is the only one who could have a match quite at that level. But there's a whole roster of people you could put in there that, you know, they could they could use that spotlight. They could, you know, um, and, and to go with Asuka for both, I just, you know, I don't know. I was just so negative on, it's like, come on, like, can't you, like, can't you at least give somebody a chance from, it, from you know, again, like, Bel Air, who is... You know, obviously got something, and she should be able to have a good match with Bailey. That wouldn't be as good as an Oscar match, but you know, Oscar working twice, knowing the way they think, you know, they might, you know, one of those matches might end up being short and not so good anyway. And then, um, you know, again, Rhea Ripley, obviously, that would have been my pick was Rhea Ripley, and at least it would have, you know, made her, you know, given her that star thing that they took away from her and that they've never given her since. So, um, you know, other than that she works with in that tag team feud with Mercedes Martinez and Aaliyah. So, um, yep, that's what they did there. Mandy Rose on Deville hair match. So a lot of women's matches on the show. And then they also announced that Bailey and Sasha Banks will be defending the tag team titles. I don't know against who. On the pay-per-view on the 30th that I'd like almost forgotten that there's another pay-per-view two straight weeks. But right, payback. Yep, payback. So Which we is. still don't know why there is a pay-per-view the week after Well, SummerSlam. I think that we're going to find out. I think that the, the key will be, you know, an angle at SummerSlam is going to lead to need of immediate rematch. So it'll be whatever that angle is, whether it's Drew and Randy Orton. It's it's going to be like, it's uh, it's going to be in either the, um you know, the one of the two major championship matches is going to have to have an angle to build for an immediate return. I don't, you know, I don't know which one it's going to be. 